Hi guys and welcome to a new Bo Reads World video. I know, a new video and debut Harry Styles album in the same weekend. What a time to be alive, eh? So today I'm bringing you my April wrap-up video and let's be real guys, this is a big moment for me because I have 10 books to talk to you about. I read 10 books in one month. When I see those other e booktubers, they're always like, these are the 15 books that I read this month, or these are the 11 books I read in the first half of May. I normally get to 4, maybe 5 if there's a long weekend in it, but in April I read 10 books, so let's get on with it because I have a lot to talk about. You'll see that April is quite the diverse month because I read quite a few authors from countries that I normally don't read from and the first one is actually one of those and that is Chewing Gum by Mansour Bushnav which is published by Dove Publishers which I hadn't heard by before but they're an uh, independent publishing company uh, who mainly publish authors from Africa I think and the Arabian world Mostly Africa, I think. And uh, Mansur Bushnav is a Libyan author who was incarcerated for quite some time under the regime of Gaddafi. So, yeah, definitely a political figure in that way. And this is about uh, Libya, but in a way that is very metaphorical, very allegorical. Uh, he describes how a guy uh, is saying goodbye to his girlfriend. They just split up and she's walking away from him in a park in a Libyan city, which isn't really defined. And the years pass by and he just keeps watching her walk away and he turns to stone or turns into a tree or something like that. And, you know, very metaphorical. Uh, also, this is about chewing gum, about how everybody gets addicted to chewing gum, wants to buy all the chewing gum. Chewing gum gets imported from America because it's, it's yeah, it's, it's as much worth as gold. And I have to say that this is a book that I uh, enjoyed but didn't really get get in all the places because I just don't know enough of Libyan um, history. This is a country that only popped on, on my radar when Gaddafi, uh, when the regime of Gaddafi ended and he was killed so um, yeah this is definitely a book that I should reread after I have put a bit more research into uh, the history of Libya but still it's a three star read. The next book is by an Icelandic author, which is already the third Icelandic author that I'm reading this year, which is odd, but also exciting. And that is uh, Moonstone, the Moonstone? Moonstone, The Boy Who Never Was by Sean. Uh, this takes place in 1918, just after the First World War has ended and when the Spanish flu arrives in Iceland. We follow a teenager in Iceland in Reykjavik who is uh, walking the streets at night looking for some good time with other men and who is being raised by his grandmother and you know when the Spanish flu arrives the city totally changes, everything uh, shuts down, he is a, a very big fan of the movies and when the theater closes he doesn't know what to do with himself, he also gets sick and uh, you know the story goes on from there and the reason that this book is called Moonstone is because his name um, sounds like that in Icelandic and you know he meets a couple of English uh, people who arrive on the cruise or something like that so that's where the book gets its name from and I have to say I was a tiny bit disappointed uh, by this book I was expecting a lot more, I don't know, a lot more uh, uh, atmosphere creation or something like that, but still uh, it was nice to be transported back into uh, the 1910s of Iceland, which is a location and a time period that I hadn't read anything about before, so yeah, still enjoyed it. Then the next book I read was very twee, very uh, heartwarming, and that was The Storied Life of AJ Fikri, uh, which I read in Dutch, and I don't know, like I said, very heartwarming, very... It, it was like reading a cuddle, if you have to say it like that. Uh, for those who don't know, because I think that this was quite a sensation when it was first published, this is about H.J. Fikri, who has just lost his wife and is a bookseller, and one day a mom leaves her child uh, among his uh, bookshelves and disappears, 
and yeah, he decides to raise it himself and the story goes on from there, which uh, takes some turns and some twists that you wouldn't expect, but mostly this is just a book about what it is to, to love a child and also uh, a book about books, which is always a great thing to read for a, for a book lover, so uh, I would definitely recommend it if you hadn't read it before, but... I think I was one of the last to read this, no? Then the next one was one that I hadn't heard and then just picked up on a whim and that is The Peculiar Life of a Lonely Postman by Denis Theriot who is a Canadian author and this is a book that had already been published in Canada in 2004 but has only been translated this year or last year into English and um, this is about a postman who is quite lonely and decides to you know, borrow some letters before he posts them and take a, a copy of them and just keeps it in his own archives. You know, he lives vicariously through other people's correspondence, which is the reason that I picked this up because, you know, that spoke to me in a way. Um, not in a creepy way, but just, you know, in a curious way. And uh, also a bit disappointed by this book because um, I have to say that it, it seemed more like this was a bit of a stalker kind of psychopath in the making a postman instead of a, oh look he's so uh, you know <laughs> uh, yeah uh, let's say that I wouldn't want him to do my mail round okay the next book is by Herman Koch who has gained some uh, traction on booktube I think and that is Muck Leclaven which was uh, the gift that you got when you uh, bought a book um, at Book Week uh, in April and uh, let's say that I prefer his novels, not this. This was utter shite, yeah. And the next book is one that I picked up on the recommendation of Simon over at Savage Reads and this is the first poetry collection I read in a long, long time and that is Physical by Andrew Macmillan. And there were some poems in, the, in here that I didn't get or just, you know, didn't speak to me but uh, especially the first half of this uh, collection, wow, this, yeah, this really spoke to me and especially the second one, I think, called Urination, that was just, yeah, I, I just, I read this and, and I read it again and, yeah, it, it, it spoke to me on a whole other level, so it's amazing what just one page of poetry can do to you, so, uh, yeah. I would recommend this. This is a poetry collection about the male body and what it is to be gay in uh, today's society. So, um, if those are things that appeal to you, definitely pick this up. And we have qu have quite a chunk, here, and that is Night Before the Feast by Sasha Stanisic. Uh, who is a Bosnian Herzegovina author? I told you that there were some uh, weird nationalities in there, um, and this is uh, takes place in a German uh, village just before the yearly feast takes place in the night before, and uh, there are some weird people in this village, and it's also about how society is moving on, and there are being left behind a bit and about the inhabitants, about the weird quirks that they do at night, so, um, you know, if small town life is something that speaks to you, pick this up, I think this is also uh, been translated into English, yeah, I'm quite sure this has been translated into English, so, uh, yeah, uh, German small city life, this is your thing. Then three more to go, then I read The Evenings by Herard Reve, which is a Dutch classic. This has been published in 1947 and takes place in the last 10 days of 1946 in Amsterdam and we follow one young guy who just goes to work every day and then we see what he does in the evenings and he doesn't really do that much. He uh, just yeah, lives his life visits friends and it's about how the post-war young generation of the of Amsterdam uh, doesn't really see itself having a future anymore about how the country has suffered but also the war isn't explicitly mentioned in this it's just you know there was a war and now life goes on and what is there to it so this felt very bleak very uh, it, it didn't really leave me with a good feeling but 
like I said, it's a classic and it, deservedly so. Uh, if you have a chance to pick this up because it has been translated into English in, in uh, last year, I think, uh, I definitely recommend it because this is unlike anything you have ever read. So. Then, uh, second to last, we have Nutshell by Ian McEwen. I was expecting more of this. This is about the perspective of an unborn child in the mother's womb who hears how her his mother has an affair uh, with another man while his father is trying to win her love back and this doesn't end well at all. And um, I think that the gimmick of uh, hearing the um, thoughts of an unborn child who has the thoughts of an adult it was quite funny at first, but then it starts ranging a bit, and yeah, I wasn't a fan. And then finally, another book that I saw on uh, Simon's channel was The Trouble with Goats and Sheep, and oh, this was just a delight to read. I just read the entirety in one evening, and this is about two young girls in that mythical summer of 1976 which has been uh, described in so many books because uh, it didn't rain for f 52 days or something like that and it was scorching hot the entire time and this is about two young girls who uh, one day noticed that their neighbor Mrs. Creasy had gone missing. They decide to investigate how that's possible and what their neighbors know. Suddenly Secrets see the daylight and their neighborhood starts to unravel and yeah, just oh, uh, This was a great read a very great read So those were the ten books. Yeah, ten books Those were the ten books that I read in April if you have read any of these or would like to comment or recommend Something based on those books. Please let me know down in the comments and we'll have a chat about it If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe if you really enjoyed it and I'll see you next time with another video. Bye